Hi, my name is Atif Darwish, professor and consultant of obstetrics and gynecology. Today, I would like to stress on an important issue in laparoscopic surgery, which is how to achieve safe entry to the abdomen. And this is important because the primary portal entry is associated with up to 40% of laparoscopic complications. And most of them are vascular injuries or visceral injuries. And vascular injuries have been reported in, to, uh, in around up to 17% of cases and unrecognized in sinal injuries in 32 and uh, if in sinal adhesions or previous laparotomy is present, the injuries uh, percentage uh, uh, increases up to 27% of cases and up to 80% uh, uh, if the operation was nearby the umbilicus. So the entry is important. Moreover, the aorta is near to the umbilicus, which is the primary portal in most of cases and the distance from the entry point to the aorta is 0.4 centimeters in normal individuals. So it is near, and in overweight patients, it increases uh, to 2.4 centimeters, and in obese patients, it uh, increases to 2.9 centimeters. So this is the second important issue uh, when you are trying to enter the abdomen that the aorta is uh, nearby the entry side. And vascular injuries can occur with virus needle or primary trochal, trochal insertion due to proximity of the major abdominal vessels and abdominal wall as reported in many studies. Importantly, during entry, you should put your patient in flat dorsal position. Don't make trend Lindbergh position during entry because this trend Lindbergh position will make the intestine and viscera near the uh, uh, site of entry. So trend Lindbergh position is recommended after you enter the abdomen, after introduction of the telescope, to the abdomen to displace the intestine to see the pelvis. Of course, without uh, basic knowledge of the anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall, you can make a lot of complications. Simply, I uh, put these figures to uh, remind you that we have two important uh, blood vessels of the anterior abdominal wall. The, External iliac and the femoral artery. External iliac, once it uh, uh, comes to the inguinal ligament, its name will be femoral artery. So the external iliac artery supplies the anterior abdominal wall by, by the uh, uh, by the uh, superficial, uh, by the uh, inferior gastric and deep circumflex uh, artery while the uh, femoral artery supplies the anterior abdominal wall by superficial epigastric, superficial circumflex artery, and also external buodendal. So the superficial vessels, superficial epigastric, comes from the femoral artery, while the uh, inferior epigastric comes from the external iliac artery. And we have to know that the inferior gastric has superficial inferior gastric in around two, two thirds of people and deep inferior gastric in all people. So now we, during entry, the most important blood vessels to be put in mind uh, are the superficial gastric and inferior gastric. And fortunately enough, the course of superficial gastric is more or less similar to the course of inferior gastric. So the risk uh, is expected to be less if you know the anatomy of the superficial and the inferior gastric. How to know the uh, these blood vessels? When you go inside the abdomen via the umbilicus, you have to look to the pelvis. You may find a midline uh, fold, which is median umbilical fold, representing the umbilical uh, ligament or uracus, and it, in some people it cannot be seen. Laterally, you will see the medial umbilical fold representing the obliterated umbilical artery, which is a branch of superior 
vesicular artery. And the lateral umbilical fold is the uh, inferior gastric, which is the most important during entry. How to know the inferior or the deep inferior gastric? The knowledge is based on two steps. Number one, you look to the uterus and then the round ligament. Okay, this is number one, to identify the round ligament. Now, round ligament is goes to the uh, inguinal canal. At the site of entry to the inguinal canal, you will see just medial to it uh, uh, the uh, inferior of the gastric. So start by the uterus, uh, round ligament, and then the entrance to the inguinal canal, you can see the uh, lateral umbilical fold containing the inferior vagastic. And this is the medial umbilical fold. As I told you, it is obliterated ligament. How to identify superficial uh, epigastric? I told you the course is more or less similar to the deep, but the superficial is, known, is known by the transillumination test. When you uh, put the telescope light with light to the anterior, uh, very proximal to the anterior abdominal wall, you can see the blood vessels by your eye outside from the skin. So the course is similar, more or less similar to the deep inferior gastric. And this is an important uh, landmark. So when you uh, uh, need to know the inferior gastric and superficial gastric anatomy, because I have to insert auxiliary uh, uh, or additional trucker sites for the uh, instrumentation. So during introduction of the auxiliary trockers for right side, left side, or midline, there should never be intestinal or major vessels, of course, because it's under vision. So the major vessels or the intestine or the colon uh, should never uh, be injured during introduction. The risk is only for the superficial epigastric and deep epigastric vessels. I told you the superficial is known by the trans illumination test and the deep is known from inside by the anatomy. But one of you will say that sometimes I have a, an obese patient. I cannot see the round ligament and the uh, lateral umbilical fold, as you told me, during uh, adjust medial to the entrance to the inguinal canal. In such a case, you can put an empiric uh, landmark as published in some studies that the distance uh, of the epigastric vessels uh, is usually between four and eight centimeters from the midline. So if you come away from the midline by this distance, you as usually you are in a safe zone. And uh, other studies found that if you uh, are eight millimeter from the midline and at least five centimeters above the sims pubis, this is the site of the least risk of injury to blood vessels. Okay, we uh, now we uh, had uh, some uh, knowledge about the anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall and vascular uh, relation to the sites of injury. I need to enter the abdomen now. You can enter via the umbilicus or by uh, via alternative sites away from the umbilicus. The umbilicus entry is closed technique or open technique. Closed means without seeing what you are doing. Uh, and it's usually by virus needle or by direct trucker application. And the open, of course, by open laparoscopy. The, we will start by virus needle. You know virus needle is uh, a simple instrument, but uh, designed uh, in a perfect way. That has a blunt end to avoid vital organ injuries, has a hole for CO2 leakage or pa passage to the abdomen, a bevel tip to perforate the rectus and peritoneum. It has spring to protect the tip of the cannula from injury by the bevel tip. So the plant goes first to avoid any visceral injuries. And it has a hollow cannula for CO2 uh, passage and some uh, disposable uh, 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 virus needle has ball float to be moved uh, to see the uh, gas is moving or not. So every part in the uh, virus needle was a reusable or disposable 
is important for its proper work way to avoid injuries and to ensure safe entry. Don't forget this is the this part is called the housing, which is important when you introduce the virus needle. You should uh, grasp uh, the housing, and you should you should make pressure when uh, you are introducing the virus needle while handling the housing, not the shaft uh, of the uh, needle. There are many uh, needle safety tests published before, like double click tests, aspiration, injection, recovery, or dripping test, or a hang drop test. All these tests are designed to ensure that when you inject some uh, fluid like saline and aspirate to see if this it goes easily, okay, if you, no aspiration, no uh, recovery, or uh, so put a drop of saline on the wrist needle and make traction of the anterior donor roll upwards to see if it is sucked or not. All these are uh, trials to ensure safe uh, uh, entry. Unfortunately, the uh, studies or, and the recommendations found that all these tests had have not been found to confirm proper positioning of the wrist needle and they are no longer recommended as best practice, this grade one A evidence. What is the important test to be put in mind when you are introducing the virus needle that you look to the uh, uh, CO2 uh, uh, CO2 uh, laparoflator, which is the uh, apparatus to uh, be used to uh, infuse the CO2 to the abdomen. You have to look to the manometer, uh, which is the pressure of the fluid when you introduce the needle. Less than 10 in 10, which means the pressure should be less than, less than 10 millimeter mercury in the first 10 seconds. So don't forget 10 and 10. In the first 10 seconds, you look to the manometer. If it is less than 10, this means that you are in a proper place. This is called initial intraperitoneal pressure test. And this is the most reliable indicator of correct placement as evidence 1A. You have to modify the angle of entrance of the virus needle according to the patient's uh, body mass index and weight. If she is normal, you can uh, introduce the virus needle directed to the pelvis by the angle of 45. If she is obese, the angle should be 90 degree. But if she is overweight in between, so you have to modify the entrance angle according to the uh, patient's weight. And importantly to know that if you move the virus needle from one side to side, this will increase the risk if it is inserted wrongly into or unintentionally into a viscous, this may lead to uh, a widening of the injury side. And this is uh, uh, level two evidence. And repeated attempts of introduction of the virus needle also increases the risk of complications. It has been found that more than four attempts is associated with 40 84% uh, of complications. A recent uh, uh, study uh, published uh, the use of a disposable uh, cup, which is vacuum cup, plastic cup, to be introduced to the site of the umbilicus or even any alternative uh, portal for enter like Palmar Point or whatever. And this uh, cup is connected to suction to make suction of the abdomen uh, to elevate the anterior abdominal wall away uh, from the viscera. And then you introduce the virus needle through this cup. And after introduction of uh, the pneumoperitoneum, you deflate the cup. And uh, by this way, the uh, insufflation is away from the uh, viscera, particularly in patients with a history of previous operation or uh, adhesions. Actually, it is a preliminary study recently published, and this cup uh, is uh, expensive and disposable and uh, with no supportive uh, evidence-based studies, of course, but it is recently introduced into the uh, practice to ensure safety. And this group uh, tested this cup in patients subjected to CT, interventional CT in some in a center and 
made CT scan of the abdomen for those cases uh, in the umbilicus or the palmar point to see the distance, which is more than five centimeter from the uh, blood vessels, but importantly to know that the initial uh, uh, monitoring of the blood pressure is the most significant and the most evidence-based uh, test for safe entry. So this is the first closed technique. The second is direct trocar application, and you have to uh, apply the trocar directly without uh, introduction of this needle, of course, after making incision of the umbilicus according to the caliber of the trocar, if it is five or 10 millimeters. But don't forget that the index finger safety is important during introduction of the direct trocar to avoid an intentional injury of the aorta or blood vessels. And the uh, primary uh, direct trocar insertion is introduced in the uh, picture down to uh, without grasping of the anterior abdominal wall by you or your assistants to avoid uh, approximation of the omentum and viscera to the site of injury, because this elevation uh, may increase omental perforation and uh, it doesn't avoid visceral or vascular injuries as evidenced by level two evidence. So the direct trocar insertion is uh, more time saving with fewer insufflation complications and failed entries. However, there is insufficient evidence to conclude that it is associated with fewer major complications. Of course, a very controversial issue is to use direct trocar or various needle. And there are many uh, uh, systematic reviews and meta-analyses uh, uh, describe the difference between both of te techniques. And this study uh, included uh, 12 clinical trials and found that direct trocar insertion decreases operative time, decreases anesthesia um, uh, dose, decreases CO2 insufflation, and decreases the number of instrumentation by uh, elimination of the uh, uh, disposable virus needle. And actually, the direct trocar insertion in this meta-analysis showed significantly decreased incidence of complications uh, like extra peritoneal insufflation, field entry, or mental lesions, or subcutaneous emphysema. However, it is not suitable for patients with history of midline laparotomies, obese patients, poorly relaxed uh, patients with difficulty or impossible uh, correctly uh, lifting the abdominal wall. Uh, if compared to virus needle. So the uh, direct trocar and virus needle showed similar results regarding vascular lesions and visceral lesions. In general, the studies found direct trocar insertion at least is not inferior to virus needle with some more advantages. Another uh, meta-analysis of a bigger number of clinical trials, 25 clinical trials, comparing this needle, direct trocar, and open laparoscopy, found that direct trocar insertion uh, is, if compared to virus needle, is associated with decreased vascular, visceral, and mental injuries, decreased field entry, decreased extraperitoneal insufflation, bleeding, and infection of the trocar site, and decreased incisional hernia. Uh, if compared to open laparoscopy, the direct trocar insertion is associated with decreased visceral injuries, decreased trocar site infection as drained from all these studies over on around 7,000 patients. So the direct trocar insertion significantly decreased incidence of complications and may be preferred as recommended by this uh, study or meta-analysis. We have to know that if you go to the umbilicus for direct trocar, you have supraumbilical, infraumbilical, or intraumbilical intracytes. Usually supraumbilical is used by the general surgeons who, who are doing upper abdominal surgeries like cholecystectomy and infra for gynecologic and also for intraumbilical uh, incision for gynecologic uh, and lower uh, abdominal or pelvic surgeries. Recently, we introduced a new and novel uh, entry uh, technique, which is called Darwish laparoscopic entry as a modified direct trocar technique. Simply, it 
uh, we make an uh, intraumbilical incision, but it should be curved inside the umbilicus, not from the skin. We grasp the skin by toothed uh, forceps to avoid incision on the skin to not to be seen later on. And we make it intraumbilical and curve it, not straight, not, not to cut the scar of the umbilicus, intraumbilical, curve it. And then we introduce the uh, direct surcar, but not directly to the pelvis. We introduce it uh, for one or two centimeters laterally to the right side of the patient. And then we tilt the trocar to the pelvis after this one or two centimeters to the pelvis. And then we do the laparoscopy. What is the advantage of this important step? Curve it inside the umbilicus is cosmetic uh, uh, aesthetic for the ladies to avoid scar appearance. It is intraumbilical scar, like the scar of the umbilicus not seen outside. And this uh, step of introduction of the trocar in the transverse plane for one or two centimeters until the sleeve is not seen, and then rotation into the pelvis allows uh, uh, less intraoperative gas leakage, less trocar slippage, which is a common problem. If you make an incision, big incision, in the umbilicus, the trocar comes out every now and then during the prolonged operations. By this technique, you uh, change this trocar into, uh, 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 into a self-retaining trocar to avoid its slippage and no need for additional sutures later on because it is intraumbilical curved inside the umbilicus. So it is a modified, curved, deep, bidirectional, intraumbilical vertical incision or for insertion of the tri direct trocar. And this has been published and uh, it was compared to the uh, infraumbilical incision uh, in uh, our study and found to be superior and has been published in November 2023. So these are informations about the closed technique. What about open technique? The open technique is creation of intramolecular incision under vision using a blunt trocar to be introduced after opening the rectus sheath and plutonium, and you open it with your finger until the uh, blunt uh, trocar is introduced, and then fix it to the uh, insides of the rectus to avoid leakage. And actually, it is uh, important to avoid injury of viscera, uh, and usually it is not associated with enteritis and has a lower incidence of vascular injuries, but a potentially higher incidence of bowel injuries because if the bowel is uh, densely adherent to the site of injury, the, uh, uh, the site of injury, injury is inevitable. And we have uh, described the technique of open laparoscopy after instinal resection anastomosis in a patient with extensive incisions of the abdomen uh, on the YouTube, and this is the link of the uh, procedure in details. So these are the umbilical entry, either closed or open technique. Okay, the umbilicus is not suitable for me. I need an alternative site for injuries, uh, for entry. So we have to discuss alternative sites. Why to use alternative entry sites when an umbilical entry is complicated or risky? particularly in patients with periumbilical adhesions, umbilical hernia, umbilical repair, push, um, uh, mesh or history or presence of umbilical hernia, low or high body mass index. Also, after failed three trials of attempts, attempts of umbilical various needed insertion. So you have to look to an alternative entry site. So the umbilical hernia scar or mass is a cause the large pelvic pathology like fibroid, I need to go up above the umbilicus. So I can use other abdominal entry sites like Li Hung, uh, Hung uh, point. Uh, also in gynecologic malignancies, uh, in field umbilical or palmar approach, we can use palmar points if the infraumbilical laparotomy scar failed trans umbilical attempts or obese or very thin women. Uh, or sometimes we can use transfundal or transvaginal approaches for insufflation uh, through the posterior uh, fornix or the triumphandus by perforation of the uterus 
if failed or contraindicated other approaches. So this uh, figure shows you the summary of alternative non-umbilical entry. If you look to the left side, left abdominal approaches, you can find ninth intercostal space entry. Of course, it's risky because it may injure the spleen, the stomach, and sometimes lung or pleura. Uh, also, the uh, lower to it is palmar point, which is three centimeters below the costal margin uh, in the mid-clavicular line. And uh, again, it may have some injuries to the spleen, stomach, and nasogastric tube is mandatory in this case, in all left-sided uh, enterocytes. Uh, lower to it is Jen's point, which is 2.5 uh, centimeters uh, medial to the anterior superior spine left side, and then uh, elevate, uh, take an imaginal line until the level of the umbilicus. This is the point of entry. And again, it needs uh, checking the spleen uh, that is enlarged, is not enlarged, stomach is normal and insertion of an esogastric uh, tube is mandatory. This is the left, ab uh, left abdominal entry, either upper abdominal or Jan's point. Also, I told you transvaginal and transuterine if abdominal approach is difficult. On the uh, middle upper abdomen, there is Latif point, which is uh, commonly used in general surgery and actually there is a risk of a hepatic uh, injury. Uh, also, the uh, uh, Hung point, which is commonly used by general surgeons for cholecystectomy or our, or bariatric surgery. And this is a picture of telescope at the uh, Li Hung point. And again, there is a risk of our abdominal visceral injuries like liver injury in these uh, right-sided uh, and mid, mid, middle upper abdominal approaches. And recently we introduced an important point, which is Darwish point on the right side, uh, and mirror image uh, point for Jan's point, 2.5 centimeters of the right anterior severe spine in the transverse plane, and then go into a measuring line till the level of the umbilicus, which is the Darwish point. Why to use Darwish point, not Jan's point? Why to use it for our pelvic and lower abdominal uh, surgery? This can be uh, shown in this table because it does not require any prerequisite checking the spleen, the stomach, or nasogastric tube, uh, no elevation of the anterior abdominal wall, just examination under general anesthesia to exclude any mess in this site. And this is the site of Darwish Point, which is, as I told you, at the uh, level of the umbilicus, an imaginary vertical line to 2.5 centimeters from anterior sulex spine. While Jan's point requires uh, checking the spleen to not to be enlarged, stomach should be deflated of air or, uh, or fluid, whether nasogastric or orogastric, and this uh, uh, intubation actually is associated with some complications as reported. They reported some complications like subcutaneous and omental emphysema. And if you look to their uh, picture they published, they are grasping the vis needle in a wrong way. They grasp the shaft of the vis needle to be introduced. As I told you, we have to grasp the vis needle from the housing. So the risk of emphysema and uh, 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 subcutaneous emphysema or mental emphysema is minimized if you grasp the housing of the uh, virus needle, not the shaft. And it is right-sided to the surgeon, so it is more ergo ergonomic and enables perpendicular insertion of the needle to avoid unintentional injury if it is curved or by uh, 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 curved or in uh, another direction, not to be perpendicular particularly for right-handed right surgeons. And this is a recent study published by our team to describe how to use Darwish point for umbilical lesion surgeries, uh, like umbilical endometriosis as seen in this case report, which has been proved by ultrasound, by MRI, 
uh, to be umbilical endometriosis and we excised it when we approached the abdomen via the uh, darush point and the ultimate result of this uh, approach is to preserve the umbilicus which is uh, important for ladies that they need to preserve the umbilicus you know most of the uh, surgeries for the umbilical endometriosis uh, removes umbilicus itself and ladies uh, would be very angry due to this approach. By this way, we can uh, have smart abdominal access with aesthetic umbilicus, uh, umbilical repair, and this is uh, uh, desirable by the ladies. And also we use the Darwish point for combined upper and lower abdominal laparoscopic surgeries. We perform upper abdominal surgeries like cholecystectomy or gastric operations and pelvic surgeries like ovarian cystectomy, salpingectomy, or whatever, using the Darwish point. By this way, this point is midway between the upper and lower abdominal surgeries. So it saves the abdomen from a lot of, in, uh, of punctures a lot of portal sites, and this is more cosmetic and more convenient, less pain post-operative, and most of our patients are satisfied by minimizing the uh, uh, portal sites to uh, have uh, rapid recovery and more cosmosis. Last point, if you have a patient with uh, pregnancy, you can use various needle if uh, the pregnancy is less than 14 weeks, and if it is more than 14 weeks, you can use open laparoscopy. This uh, has been recommended by uh, some societies uh, as le uh, evidence level two, but I uh, need to add uh, now that uh, alternative intracytes can be used if it is more than four, 14 weeks, like uh, Darwish point, Palmer point, or whatever. So not only open laparoscopy, if you don't use uh, open laparoscopy, you can use alternative intracytes as well. The first step after entry of the abdomen is not to go to the valves, not to do the operation, not to see the ovaries, not to see the uterus. What to do is the first step is to immediately check any injuries below the umbilicus uh, after entry. Sometimes there is an undiagnosed injury of colon, momentum, or blood vessels, so you do the operation, and after the operation, you are confronted by a catastrophe. So the first step is not to look to the pelvis, to look at the site of entry. And in conclusion of this summary of the entry techniques, I would say that understanding the basic anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall is mandatory for safe laparoscopy, and efficient laparoscopists should master uh, all alternative entry approaches not to be confronted with a difficulty and to make complications if you are mastering only umbilical entry and there is umbilical adhesions or umbilical hernia or whatever, you may have some serious uh, complication because you don't master except umbilical approach. You should uh, train yourself on alternative approaches and selection of the best entry site should be individualized according to the history of the patient, according to the examination, according to the body mass index, according to your experience, according to the availability of instrumentation and otherwise. Thank you uh, for uh, attention.